Hello and welcome. I almost didn't make it. I almost forgot my one camera that I really needed. Uh, I love it. Right down to the wire. So welcome. Uh, my name is Paige. If you are new here, I'm the chief pixel pusher and paintbrusher over at Gumption. And I hope you're having a nice evening. Tonight, we're going to be painting watermelon. And it's actually going to be a pretty easy class and fun class. Uh, so this is a great class for kids too. Let's see, what are you going to need tonight? Well, you're going to need watercolor and colored pencil if you wanna work with the both of them. Um, I'm using core watercolors. I'll be using uh, quinacridone coral. That's actually Daniel Smith color and probably a little opera and maybe a little yellow to make that kind of a really pretty peachy, orangey, hot pink color. This class usually lasts about an hour, so kind of anticipate that. And um, if you wanna learn more about me or learn more about my streaming schedule, you can check it out at ihavecumption.com uh, where you can find the calendar and that will tell you what's happening here in the studio. Uh, let's see, before we get started, um, I am going to do a little plug for a little project that I'm doing right now. I am doing the Sticker of the Month Club over at Patreon. So if you're a sticker buff and you love uh, slapping stickers on your water bottle and stuff, I've got some really fun things planned and some fun stickers already over at IHaveGumption.com. So just now in August, Sticker of the Month Club is starting and you're probably going to want to check it out. All right. Another tip tonight, unrelated to uh, advertising, is we, we'll probably be heating up our colored pencils tonight. And so how we can do that is by using a cookie sheet and a heating pad. You just turn that cookie sheet upside down over the um, heating pad and you have a nice warm surface that you can draw on. So uh, you don't need anything fancy but we'll probably be whipping that out tonight. Okay, I think we've covered everything here. So let's get to drawing and painting some watermelon. So I'm gonna switch my camera view here really quickly. And this is the camera that I forgot to plug in. I'm also going to slide into the chat area uh, some information for you that you can download some links there to access the sketch if you if you need the sketch of this. Um, I have two, let's see. I have two links for you. We have a reference sketch that I'm going to throw in here in chat. So if you're uh, on YouTube, it should show up in the chat there. If you're on Facebook, it'll probably be a comment down below. There is some great reference imagery if you need some reference. This link here on Unsplash. So you can use reference or not. That's just fine. All right. So let's see if I got my camera working and we'll get to work here. Okay. You kind of just have to roll, roll with the punches, you know? <laughs> so I know that Laurel is uh, here with me tonight. So hello, Laurel and family. It's so nice to see that you're hanging out with us tonight. So this is what we're going to be working on tonight. We're going to do a couple of slices of watermelon. This is watercolor and colored pencil. And I'm just gonna sketch mine out tonight. Again, you can go ahead and download the sheet if you find that to be more helpful. I'm gonna work a little smaller on this next drawing. Slide back here. 
uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, go ahead and say hello in the comments. Let me know that you're here with us. We have some regulars that tune in. So I'm just using really lightly this cool erase blue color. We talked about it last week. This is a, an erasable pencil. And they're kind of nice for watercolor because they're really light and they don't smear quite in the same way that regular pencils do. And this is a kneaded eraser, the best tool for an artist around. So all I'm doing, for those of you who uh, might want a little instruction here, we have kind of this triangular shape with this curved part at the bottom. And I'm just going to draw a couple side by side so you can kind of use that as a guide there. The one that's closer to us, the larger one. And the smaller one is in the back. Zoom in here. It's really hard to see that, but you can kind of get the idea. Oops, let's zoom out a little. And then the thing, we'll have to sketch in the rind. Of course, I know you're all familiar with water melon here so and then watermelon has these kind of divots you know where the seed actually um sits in there in places and so i'm just gonna the divots kind of go around the center here and so we'll just add a few of these depressions with my pencil and a couple of seeds. You'll want to make sure you include some seeds. I don't know, you know, I just love watermelon because it's so refreshing, right? And it's a summer staple. And I thought it would be a fun thing to sketch and paint because it's perfect for summer. Okay, so that's really all you have to do. A couple things to keep in mind is we'll keep in mind that there will be a shadow. So I'm just kind of marking that off here. because this is where the rind sits on the table. So we'll just want it to butt up right there. And then just like here, this one's a little bit easier to see. And then I'm gonna put some seeds here. I like to use an odd number to make it a little more interesting. All right, so you'll have to let me know how you're doing if you're sketching along. I don't want to move too fast for you. But what we're going to do next is we're going to mix up some color because we're going to work wet in wet tonight and things start moving pretty fast. It seems like with the heat, everything dries so much faster. Now I'm going to give you a couple of tips um, for working in this way. And I kind of had to remind myself of this as I was working on this, this one. This one's a little bit larger than sometimes I do on camera. And you always want to make sure that you have a big enough brush for the area that you're working in. And of course, what happened to my other brush? Must have slid under somewhere. This is a pretty large brush, maybe too large maybe for this area, but it might work. Um, when you're starting out in an area like this with a little tiny brush, uh, it makes it really hard for you. And so 
just remember to use the appropriate sized brush kind of for the area that you're working in just to make your life easier to make uh, the uh, less brush strokes in your paint and it's something that I have to remind myself of a lot and so I just thought that would be worth mentioning here. So I'll leave this picture up in case you're still sketching. I'm going to start mixing my paint here. Okay, so I have these really handy dandy nesting palettes uh, that I like to use. And I'm just going to put a little bit of water in here. I don't want to run out of paint. So I have this beautiful color that's called Opera. It is basically hot pink that I really love to use. It's almost neon-like, although pinks are not very light fast. So just note that if you love hot pink too. And I wanna get this pretty pigmented. I may have to switch out my brush here. Let's try this brush. This is a Daniel Smith color. They, to my knowledge, uh, the last time I looked, Core didn't have a an opera color, which I'm bummed about. They have a great fluorescent pink in all their other lines, but they don't have it in their watercolor yet. So then uh, another color that I'm going to mix, and this is just personal preference. If you don't have quinacridone uh, coral, you don't have opera, if you have a red color, that will suffice. suffice. Um, alizarin crimson or quinacridone magenta, all of those are just fine. This is just my own personal kind of aesthetic and preference. So you can, you could paint your watermelon purple if you wanted to. So this is the quinacridone coral. You can see how how watermelony that really looks. It's a beautiful color and this one is a Daniel Smith color actually too. I tell you that I use core and then now I'm just using Daniel Smith colors. But, okay and then I'm going to use this is kind of a medium yellow I think it's a cad medium yellow you can use lemon yellow you can use whatever you've got but i really like these kind of almost verging on orange but really pretty yellow what i'll do is i'll probably mix this in a little bit with my hot pink okay so we've got our, our reds here for our watermelon I'm gonna mix a green. So we're gonna take a, the yellow and we're gonna use a blue. So this is that medium yellow with, we'll use ultramarine blue. And as you, you can see, depend, the green really depends on how much blue you put in there. If you want a little more vibrant green, you could always use Thalo as well. Thalo gives it a little bit of pop, I think. Or even a cobalt teal you could probably add in there. This looks kind of like olive -y kind of green. I might just bump that up a little. You can see here, this is with Thalo. Thalo blue and it, it kind of bumps it up into the green realm a little. Okay, so that's probably good enough for now. So I'm just going to stack these up because I can to demonstrate for you. I'll be flipping them out here in a minute. Okay. 
So we're going to take our drawing. Try to kind of keep this off to the side here. There we go. And we're going to work wet and wet. And I'm going to check to see how big these brushes are. They're about the same size. So that's not too bad. Now I have to work pretty fast because of my dry air here. So I'm trying to get as much pigment out of my brush as I can in my water here. And then I'm going to generously put down water within my slice area. And we may have to do one of these at a time so they don't bleed into one another. That would probably be smart. And I am going to start, I think, here with the green and tap in the green down here at the bottom. And you can just tap it in there and it can lightly blend and I Kind of just add a little bit more down at the very edge where the rind would be. Keep in mind, watercolor tends to dry lighter. So while that's spreading, I'm going to move into my pretty colors here. We'll zoom out a little so you can kind of watch this transpire here. So I'm just going to kind of tap in. It looks like I'm drying up here. Tap in this quinacridone coral. It doesn't quite spread in the same way that my core paints do. I'm trying to move kind of fast here and we've kind of I've sketched in kind of the area where the meat of the watermelon touches the rind. I'm also tapping in some of this pretty opera color. And then I can take some of this yellow and kind of mix it in here to kind of create this rich kind of rosy orange color. And I just do this because I like the effect. I want to have some different tones here. You may have to get into your pigment a little for a little bit stronger pigment and just tap it in there. Have fun with it. Now, one thing you might need is a hairdryer for this to dry. This, you can already see I've got some pooling here where my paper's kind of warping. It will flatten out again. But what's great is you can kind of see how this color is mixing down below. And that's really like what it does uh, in a watermelon. So I might add some green or you can tip your page a little if you want to get pigment moving. The other thing that you can do, and we've talked about this a little, but you can take a dry brush and pull out color. So we have some light that will be hitting these divots where the seeds sit. And you can 
just use your dry brush and pull out the color there. It kind of keeps filling in there just a little bit, but this is a great trick that can help you fix a multitude of sins. So what I'm going to do is get out my hair dryer. I'm going to dry this really quick and put myself on mute and you guys can keep painting. And I will be right back.
I have that one stubborn puddle, right, that you can see where all the paint pooled right here. But you can see this nice effect that actually happens here while working wet and wet where these colors kind of blend together and create these fun effects. Of course, we have some, if we can get a little focus in here, there's some nice granulation and separation here. So that creates a nice texture, especially for watermelon. So uh, if you have any questions up to this point, go ahead and put them in chat. We're going to do the same thing that we just did for this one in this one in the background. So we'll start again, wet and wet. And you'll really want to make sure that your other slice here is dry. So we don't have any inadvertent blending. And this really is, it really is, uh, like I said, a great class for beginners. And you can't screw it up really. So, so I'm gonna start with my rind area. We're gonna, it's supposed to be a little bit darker here at the rind we'll kind of go over and do some more detail work with pencils and other brushes. That looks like it's spreading pretty good. Anything that you might need to pick up, you can just wipe off your brush and suck up the water there if it's spreading and you're not liking where it's going. And then I'm taking my quinacridone coral and I'm just tapping this moving it around here in this wet water already adding some opera in and this is pretty light so i'm going to want to get some more tap some more of this pigment in here And you can use any color of red or pink, whatever you have. Of course, you can see this is kind of blending in down here, but I'm not going to panic here. It's kind of the beauty of watercolor. It's unpredictable and I guess the one predictable thing is it's going to move. So because this is moving down in here, I can just take a brush and pat it on my paper towel and just lift it out of there. No need to panic. And if you want to, you can add more green in the bottom. And because of how my, so my paper is warping, so it's creating a bubble here in the center of the slice. And so all of this paint is kind of following to the edge. Again, I'm going to have another kind of a pooling down here because of that. So I'm going to dry this one again. Uh, I'm going to mute myself again, and you can keep painting. And I will be right back.
Okay, so how are you doing? Don't be afraid to put your questions in chat. Uh, and you know, I was going to bring up, I'm gonna actually bring up this website so we can kind of just look really quickly at, bear with me here, if I can get this to work here. And I'll share my screen here. Let's see. Technology, you know. Okay, so you should be seeing this website here. There's all kinds of great imagery for uh, doing your artwork. Um, and you can see this is kind of the inspiration for our, our class tonight here. But you can kind of see how the rind works with watermelon and the coloring of the watermelon. So just know that that link is actually right there in chat if you want to access this. And... The reason I show you that because uh, lifting, you know, we talk about cleaning up areas that are problematic. Well, I'm going to talk about lifting tonight. You've probably heard me discuss it in the past, but it's it's a good tool. So what I'm doing is I've wet this small brush and I'm tapping it off onto my sheet here and you can scrub out color. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit here. So this is kind of where the light is hitting this little pocket for the seed. And you can just lift with your brush. It's always good to use a clean brush and you just scrub a little. Some colors are a little better than others at lifting. You can take your paper towel or your t-shirt or what have you. And this is a great way to create light. So we'll do it kind of on this other side here too. Just tap that. And there you can have light. Let's see, let's zoom out here a little bit. So it looks kind of funky, right, at this point. We'll add more details here. But in some areas, I'm just going to kind of work in some light in some areas. If you feel like you don't have enough color down, you can paint over it. Again, what I like about working wet and wet is it gives us that really nice kind of soft blending. And here I'm creating kind of this ledge of where this was cut. And kind of All right. Okay. So at this point, I am going to put the shadows in really quickly. We will go back into detail in this, but I want to get some of the color down. So I used a color called Sodalite. This is uh, like a Payne's gray color. You could also mix a really dark purple to get this cast shadow. I'm just, I've wet my brush, I've kind of gotten some of that pigment out. 
And I'm just kind of going to do another wet and wet technique. This is really just so I can kind of gauge where this pigment is. So I've laid down some water. I can kind of tap this color here. And really it's going to be the darkest right where that rind meets the table. If you ever feel like your work is floating, it's probably because you have no shadows or your shadows are too far out away from the object. But shadows are good. Shadows make things look so much more realistic. I say it time and time again. But just as important as, as light is, so are shadows. So for now, that's probably okay. If I want to do more with that, I will. Just softening that edge just a little there. Okay, so I'm going to dry this real quick just so we can move into the rind and then we will uh, get to working with our colored pencils and our heating pad. So I'm going to mute myself. Now, truly, you can go into as much detail as you want to painting. We'll paint a little bit more, uh, and then we'll get to the colored pencil. This class may go over a little bit. We'll kind of see how we're doing here. But so now I'm going to go after my rind. And I have this great brush. This is a Trakel brush it's a very thin it's kind of like a, a script brush very thin script brush and i love these for cleaning up edges for adding detail um, and we're going to use that for the rind the rind usually is a very thin dark green color we'll kind of see how this green is going to do at the very base here this is where you can you can really kind of lay down your brush here like you would with a pencil and it will tell you if it's going to be dark enough here. It may not quite be dark enough, but that's okay. That's an easy fix. So one thing I can do is I can take this dark gray color, this Payne's gray or sodalite color and mix it into my green. And you can see I'm getting a darker green that way. And I can just go back in here. Sometimes you need more pigment. It's, it's easier to start with lighter pigment than it is to take away dark pigment initially. And you can see my line sort of up in there. So I'm gonna just duplicate this on this back one. This back slice.
Now, as we saw in our uh, imagery there, the rind was really light. So you could leave your rind like it is here, or actually you could kind of burnish out some lighter color. So we'll try it on one of them and see how, how it looks. So I've taken my brush, I've got it in water. I'm gonna scrub this area a little. I can tap it with my cloth. And there you can see you've got kind of a lighter rind area. And it doesn't disturb the pink color too badly. Now I have a pretty decent paper here, so if you scrub and you start picking up your paper, that means you probably have a, you need a better paper. And this is a Canson watercolor Excel paper. It's not very expensive. You can pick it up on Amazon or uh, Dick Blick. All right, so that looks pretty good, right? So maybe uh, I'm liking that. I'm going to do it over here too, just where this rind area is. So we're just gently lifting. And you could even go down further in here in the rind. So it's starting to feel like watermelon. Now, of course, you can continue to paint in your pinks. We're going to do a little with our areas where our seeds sit normally. And I'm not sure. I always rub the numbers off of these. So this is probably, I don't know, a five or a six maybe. I'm just going to tap in here you can make a little bit darker area this would be where it's recessed in there and the lights not hitting it and you can even do it like this area is getting shade a bit We'll actually go in with some purple, but you can use this kind of darker application here. And this is just kind of what I call glazing, where you're laying color down over color and creating shadows. I think I'm going to go along this area here too. It will help me kind of define this edge a bit as well as create that kind of shadow. And this edge too, we have some light hitting here where it's broken. And then there's a dark shadow underneath it and kind of above it here. Okay, so it's we're starting to make headway. Of course, at this stage, you can continue to add more paint if you want to. I'm going to add some of our dark seeds because once they start kind of coming into play, it will kind of start coming together even more. So I'm going to use this soda light color. You could use a dark purple, you can use a black, 
or a dark blue. So I'm going to paint in all of my seeds that I have hanging out. And I'm going to have, I'm going to tap in some darkness around the bottom of the seed. So we have a bit of a shadow if, if we can get one at all possible. So this is what you call moving the bead. There's that little bead of water and wherever it kind of lands, it's going to leave a darker area if it doesn't spread too much. These are really small seeds, so a second application may be necessary. And you always find hair whenever you're working with watercolor. So you can just tap it there at the bottom. You can lift color to create light. So I've dipped this in water. I've tapped it on my paper towel. I can run this over the top here and you can see how that creates light. Okay, now we're gonna add some seeds in the watermelon itself. You might have to kind of move your page around. So this one, I'm just gonna add kind of this base layer of color and go back in. Let's see, I can scoot this up a little. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to throw them in chat. And I'm using, this is a silver brush. I think it's a silver black velvet brush. I use Traquel brushes and then I also use these silver brushes. The silver brushes are really great at keeping a point. I also like Rosemary's brushes too, but they are a little more spendy. So, and they, they're coming from overseas, so that's, and they're hand, all handmade. So that's understandable, but, whoops, let's see. Okay, we'll kind of zoom out here. So you can kind of let these dry and then go back in for a second application. You could add a shadow underneath your seeds if you want or paint the side of it to there and create a little shadow light Let's zoom in here kind of see tap it in Okay. So now we'll move to colored pencil so we can get started on that um, while we're working. Of course, you wouldn't have to even move to colored pencil. You could stay with watercolor and finish this in watercolor. But we've been having a lot of fun with colored pencil lately. And sometimes it's just nice to change things up a little. And so we're going to do that really quick. So I'm going to transition as you're probably uh, still painting a little here. And I will be back with my new equipment. So I'm just going to move some of my water out of the way here. Excuse me. So this is a cookie sheet. I promise this has relevance. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm going to switch my camera view here just for a moment. Okay, so in one of my former classes, we talked about using the Icarus board for heating colored pencils. And so if, if you're new, this is what this is all about. The Icarus board heats up mildly warm, and then you can take your colored pencils, your Prisma color pencils or a wax-based colored pencil, and it will melt the wax just enough to kind of make it burnish a little bit nicer. Uh, it makes it blend a little bit easier. You don't have to work as hard to do that. And so this technique is the same technique, except for we're using things that you can find in your house that are, you know, you probably already have them in your house and it doesn't cost you 300 bucks to get one of these boards, which I have a board, it's great. Uh, if you wanted one, more power to you, but not everybody is ready to commit to that. And if you're just starting on your watercolor journey, or I'm sorry, your colored pencil journey, it might not be for you. So you can take a heating pad. This one I have up on high. I'm going to have it on high here for a little bit. Um, and of course, if you don't have any of these things, you can still use your colored pencils. You, it's not going to detract from what you're working on. It's just a fun thing to share. So we have our heating pad and then I have my cookie sheet and I'm turning it upside down and I'm just gonna place it on this heating pad. Now it sounds really kind of silly, but it really works. So we'll kind of, it'll take a second for it to heat up. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get out my colored pencils and we'll get to work. So I'm gonna switch my camera view. And if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in chat there for me. I think this is a pretty fun, pretty fun technique. Oh, that's the wrong camera. Check out my messy office, guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is right, right view. So this is the cookie sheet. And then I actually separate out my colored pencils in a uh, an old container for silverware. It's actually really handy. I'm going to scoot this over here to use. So keeps them all organized. You can put them in a, a drawer really easily. So I'm kind of waiting for this to heat up. Let me know how you're doing. We're running, going to run a little bit long on time. So I hope that that is okay for those of you who are tuning in. So, and you can see these are just the colors that I used for this first version. You can be as loose, fast and loose as you want on this uh, drawn version. It's just really an opportunity for you to work with something a little bit different and explore different art supplies, right? Okay. So what's great about pencils is that you can get true detail and my sharpener is kind of on the fritz so you can get really point uh, sharp points to create edges you can also do this with uh, brushes as well let's see if we can kind of i got too many things on my desk i need a bigger desk <laughs> but here you can see how you can just use your colored pencil to create a little bit more detail. And I, in this uh, illustration, I want to keep as much as I can of this beautiful soft blending as I can. So I'm just kind of gonna use the pencil to define some of these edges. I 
and you can kind of see how that. Now what I like to do for my shadows, I kind of go by the rule, warm shadows or warm light, cool shadows, cool light, warm shadows. So what does that mean? This is a cherry, this is a black cherry. It's kind of a purple color. And that helps kind of define this area and it is a cool purple. You could also, one technique I like is kind of this cross hatching with colored pencil. Just little lines next to each other. We'll kind of do this area too. But then you can see by cleaning up some of these edges, it starts giving us a little more definition and making it kind of look more like a piece of watermelon. So I'll kind of cross hatch in this area. And then I'll demonstrate here. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we have a comment here. Right on. So Laurel is right with me. So I'm glad. So that means I'm not moving too fast. So what you can do is you can get a number of different kinds of colors that are similar to your watermelon color. I truly kind of have gotten into the habit now of really testing to see what these colors really will look like next to the watercolor. It's kind of a, a safety thing if you're planning on doing something with your color here. Now you can see we had this pooling here, and so in order to fix that, I can just kind of color in this area if I want to. I might want a different pink color. And you can softly kind of sketch that in there. if you want to, or if you really want to fix some areas, you can go to town. Now I can feel that this thing is really starting to warm up. So you probably don't want to do this in a hot room <laughs> if you're dying already because of summer. You can kind of see where I've gone in and I'm adding this color now. Let's see. Oh, here we go. It's in my hand, of course. So if you haven't tuned in before and you haven't heard me talk about the colorless blender from Prisma Color. This is a great tool, kind of when you're at the point where you may not add more color, but you want to blend it a little bit. Combined with the heat, it helps a little bit to make this a little smoother. Watch this. So you can see how using this colorless blender and using this heat can fill in the crevices, especially of this watercolor paper. Because keep in mind, you know, I'm using a textured watercolor paper. Unlike if we were using hot press, which is smooth, cold press has divots in it. So you can see how I'm kind of blending out this area 
that had a little too much pigment there compared to the rest of this. Now, you probably wouldn't want to continue to work something like this um, over and over with a colorless blender because it's just like a, a layer of wa wax that you're just putting on top and it can get kind of messy if you have too many layers. So I suggest using your colored pencils first and then once you've got your, you know that you want to kind of blend it a little bit, then you can take your colorless blender after the fact. That's just kind of my opinion on how they work. But this is one way, I mean, this is a great way to fix something. If you feel like you've kind of messed up a painting, you can always go back in and add colored pencil if you want. Or if you want to add some details, this is a perfect way to do it. So I'm probably just going to add a little bit more to blend this out. Now, if I were just doing colored pencils, I would use Bristol paper to to color on, so or to draw on. What am I saying? It's been a long day. <laughs> okay, so what you can also do, of course, we I kind of fixed this rind, but if you wanted to add even darker edge down at the bottom, you could do this with a pencil. And this is really heating up, so it's going to make it really nice and soft. It just blends so nicely. Now, I guess the question, since I know Laurel is here with us, uh, Laurel, have you tried the heating pad technique yet? And if you have, what do you think of it? Now, you'll see me using this. I'm going to zoom out. This is, I think they use this for drafting <laughs> or did. I'm not sure if they draft this way anymore, but uh, those are really handy. That or like a paintbrush to um, what will happen as you color with your pencil, you'll get little wax pieces that can come off your pencil. And they can make a mess sometimes. So you can just use your little brush to make them disappear. So now there's a really kind of starting to look like slices of watermelon. You can continue to add color or detail like I might add a little bit of a line. Let's see. Maybe work a little bit of a light pink into the light area there. What's great about working with colored pencils and the heat, and you can do this thing that I call burnishing, where you can kind of go in a circle and blend into another color. And it also helps create that kind of seamless 
area there where the two colors meet and mix. So when you are at a point where you're all done and you've added all your color here that you really like, uh, you can add your highlights and you can use your white colored pencil. So we reserved some highlights already here, but you can add a really catching highlight with your white pencil. So you could do it in this area maybe, but where it's really gonna show up is on these dark areas where we have these seeds. Of course, you can always, you could try to work it in here, but I find that it has kind of a weird hue sometimes. So I like to really kind of reserve it for those dark, dark areas to create that nice highlight. And in this, uh, looking at this area, I could really darken this area a little bit to make it more like this area to create this feeling that these seeds aren't just popping out here. Because when I'm looking at this, that's what I can see. It especially helps that I can see it kind of on camera there. So if I wanted to fix that, I could just go back in and kind of add some more color here. And I'm just lightly sketching in here. And that will kind of help ground them a little. Now I love all the softness here. So for the sake of time and for tonight, I will not go crazy here, but it's good to be able to kind of step back from your work and kind of observe. Critiques are always kind of tricky, especially as we are sensitive souls and we're putting ourselves out there to do artwork. But if you want to improve your skill, you just have to be able to step back a little and, and look at it mostly. I think for most of us, it's an enjoyable thing that we just enjoy spending time doing. So I'm just kind of extending this color out. And you can see that kind of makes it better. So you could, I could keep working this and those seeds pop a little less off the page. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back in with a pencil and take away some of the, the white there. That would might help a little if it's popping too much, but you get the point, right? Oops, wrong way. So there is your watermelon. Watermelon is pretty much fat free as it is, so I can't make a joke about that, but uh, you're refreshing, fun watermelon here. So what questions might you have for me tonight before I let you go? I'm gonna switch camera angles here unless you have a question or you want me to demonstrate something here. Just let me know in the comments. And maybe I'll get the right camera selected. <laughs> what questions do you have? Oh, goodness. Hopefully my mic hasn't been muted that whole time. 
I don't think it has, but you never know, you know, if something's going to go awry, you know, it's going to happen live. So what questions do you have for me? Go ahead and put them in chat. Um, again, thank you to my Patreon subscribers. You help make this happen and, uh, I appreciate you. So thank you for your support. And there we go. Thanks, guys. And if you want to become a Patreon subscriber, you certainly can. All you have to do is go to patreon.com forward slash gumption. You can be part of the paint club or the sticker of the month club. Uh, if you're in the paint club, you automatically are now grandfathered in to the sticker club. So just know you're going to be getting stickers, folks. <laughs> awesome, Laurel. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's awesome. It's kind of a nice, easygoing assignment this time. We don't always have those, right? Uh, and this one is kind of fun to just enjoy. All right, so if you want to learn more about me or my class schedule, you can go over to IHaveGumption.com and you can click on the calendar. I think in a couple weeks, the 29th, I won't be doing a live class. I've got a couple meetings that night and they're just at the same time. So we won't be having one then. And that is on, it's reflected on our calendar now. But I'm here on Thursdays and then once a month we do a live Zoom class where you get one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation with me. We're talking about an assignment. We're doing an assignment together. And uh, if you want to be part of that, then you can go ahead and go over to patreon.com. And I'll throw that up here. Maybe. There we go. All right. Well, I hope you're enjoying your summer. I know it seems like it's going really fast and it's really hot. But uh, it's been a good summer so far, and uh, hopefully we can travel here in the fall where it's a little bit cooler. All right. Well, I don't see any additional questions, so I'm going to let you go so you can go enjoy the rest of your evening. But thank you so much for being here with me and painting with me. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. And if you are brave and you want to share your artwork with the world on Instagram, find me at I have gumption and tag me. I'd love to see your work. So thank you. And I will see you later.